I've started a daily quiz question series on Twitter, LinkedIn, and other places. Yesterday, I tweeted this question, which has got a lot of responses and questions. So I'm gonna explain the answer to this question via a video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you the answer to the question using Packet Tracer as well as GNS3. It's up to you if you wanna watch the whole video or if you just wanna see the answer. The answer, if you wanna know, is frames from PC4 sent to the switch are gonna be flooded out of port gigabit 00, gigabit 01, and gigabit 02. Unknown unicast frames are flooded. So that's the answer, but let's show you practically how that works. Now, if you don't wanna to listen to the whole video, I've put up some timers. This is the question discussion. This is explaining the answer briefly. This is Packet Tracer, and this is GNS3. So you can see me explain the answer in multiple ways, or just jump to GNS3 if you prefer, or Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer has a nice way to show packet flows, but it isn't as real as GNS3. I'm gonna explain the question now. If you're already familiar with this question, go to the timestamp displayed on the video now. Otherwise, continue watching and I'll explain the question and the answer. So the question is, out of which port or ports will the switch send the frame in the Wireshark capture and why? Let's start with the network. The network consists of a single switch. We've got this single switch with four PCs hanging off it. So four PCs with various IP addresses and MAC addresses. And this is what the MAC address table of the switch looks like. And this is what the Wireshark capture looks like. So we've got an ARP message here from 10.114 saying that it's at this MAC address. So if we look at the sender MAC address, it's this MAC address, this IP address. Target MAC address is this. Target IP address is 10.112. That's the ARP resolution. So in other words, it's an ARP reply to a previous ARP broadcast, which was asking for the MAC address of IP address 10.114. So in other words, 10.112 asked who has IP address 10.114. And 10.114 is saying this is its MAC address. At a layer two, notice the destination is this. Source is this. Notice this is a unicast, not a broadcast. A lot of people assumed that this is a broadcast. It's ARP, but it's an ARP reply. It's not an ARP request. ARP reply is a unicast, as you can see in this output here. So going back to the diagram, this switch only has this MAC address in its MAC address table. Notice the command, show MAC address table. The only MAC address in the table is the MAC address for PC3. No other MAC addresses are in the MAC address table of the switch. Now, before we get started, you need to understand how transparent bridges, as they used to be called, or ethernet switches operate. What does a switch like this do when it receives a frame? Now, the first thing is, is it a broadcast frame, or is it a multicast frame, or is it a unicast frame? And what do ethernet switches do with bum traffic, or broadcast, unknown unicast, and multicast traffic? So if the switch receives a multicast, it typically floods the frame. If it receives a broadcast frame, it will flood it out of all ports except the port in which it was received. But what about unicast traffic? If it's a frame to an unknown unicast address, the switch is gonna flood the frame. And that's the trick with this question. The switch is receiving a frame from PC4. Notice the Wireshark capture. Source MAC address is this. This is PC4. Destination MAC address is PC2. Now, this MAC address in the MAC address table is irrelevant. This is the MAC address for PC3. That means nothing in this example. The switch doesn't know the MAC address of PC2. So what is the switch gonna do 
with an unknown unicast frame, it's going to flood it out of all ports except the port in which it was received. So the answer is, the frame will be flooded out of this port, this port, and this port. In other words, gigabit 00, 01, and 02. The frame was received from PC4 on this interface and therefore will be flooded out of all other ports because this is a unknown unicast frame. The switch only knows about PC3. It doesn't know about PC2. But to prove the point, I've got Packet Tracer here. There's one feature about Packet Tracer that's really nice, and that is simulation mode in Packet Tracer. So I'm gonna run that. I've reproduced this network in Packet Tracer. There is one slight change. Notice the interface numbers are starting at 101. So we've got 101, 102, 103, 104. Whereas in my original picture, it started at 00, then 01, 02, and 03. But the same principles apply. So let's click on PC2. ipconfig slash all shows us that this is the MAC address of the PC. This is the IP address. We can do the same on PC4 as an example. ipconfig slash all, MAC address is this, IP address is this. Now I've restarted Packet Tracer to make sure that everything is blank at the moment. Show MAC address table of the switch shows no entries. I'm gonna to go to view simulation mode and start simulation mode. On the first PC, PC2, let's ping PC4. So, notice we have an ICMP packet as well as an ARP packet. The ARP packet is gonna be sent into the network first. So I'm gonna zoom in on the video, hopefully you can see this clearly, but notice layer two, Ethernet two frame from MAC address PC2 to a broadcast. This is an ARP request packet. The PC needs to know the MAC address of PC4. So again, destination is a broadcast at layer two. ARP for IP version four, source IP address, destination IP address. I'll forward the packet into the network. So this once again is the ARP request message. Same message in, same message out of the switch. But what's gonna happen is the frame is sent out of multiple ports. It's copied out of these three ports. Here, the frame will be dropped because it's the wrong IP address. IP address of this PC is 10.1.1.3, not 10.1.1.4. So this PC will drop it. This PC will also drop the frame because target is 10.1.1.4, not 10.1.1.1 but this packet will be received by the PC. So inbound, notice, is a broadcast. The reply is not a broadcast. So the packet that goes back into the network is a unicast. This PC knows the MAC address of PC2 because it learnt it in the inbound frame or inbound PDU. So it knows the MAC address source MAC address is here. So it's gonna reply, not using a broadcast, but using a unicast. So notice destination is this PC. So if we send that frame into the network, what would typically happen here is this packet will be sent only to this PC. And the reason for that is because the MAC address table has been populated. So because the MAC address table is populated, this is normal behavior. The frame is only gonna be sent to PC2. That's what most people would expect. But I messed with the network. So at this point, here's the frame at PC4. What I'm gonna do here is clear the MAC address table. So I'm gonna say clear MAC address table. So there's no MAC addresses in the switch MAC address table. Now it doesn't matter if this PC's MAC address is in the table 
or this PC. The one that's of interest is this MAC address. So it's irrelevant what other MAC addresses are on the table. So now when the packet hits the switch, the switch should have flooded that frame, but this is packet tracer. So what I'll do is restart the simulation. So that's what you would normally expect. But what happens if I mess with the MAC address table? So what I'll do is restart Packet Tracer. What's going to happen when that frame hits the switch and the destination MAC address is not in the table? It should be flooded to these three PCs, even though it's a unicast frame. So switch is coming up at the moment. Show a MAC address table. No entries in the MAC address table. I'll run simulation mode. Ping 10.114. Forward the R packet to the switch, flood it. And now at this point, I'm going to clear the MAC address table. So at the moment, the switch knows about PC2. Clear MAC address table. Now on a real switch, you'd be able to clear an individual MAC address table. Here I can't, so I have to clear the whole table. Notice what happens. This is a unicast frame. Notice unicast, it's not broadcast. We know the destination MAC address. So inbound PDU, once again, has the destination of this PC. Source is PC4. So PC4 is sending a frame to PC2, but because the switch doesn't have this MAC address, 2222 in the MAC address table, what's gonna happen is the frame is gonna be flooded to PC1, PC2, and PC3. So there you go, that's the answer. Now I purposely used ARP because I wanted to confuse and get people to fall into the trap that ARP is a broadcast. But please note, this applies to any type of traffic. So if we, once again, sent this frame, which is a unicast frame, to the switch. So it's ICMP unicast frame. Now it may not work in Packet Trace at this point because it knows the MAC addresses. But if I clear the MAC address table here, that should flood either at this point, doesn't do it there, but on the way back it will flood. So notice here, frame is back, it's a multi, it's, sorry, it's a unicast frame. The only MAC address known is the PC. This is once again unicast, no broadcasts, no Fs. It's a unicast frame, but notice what happens, it gets flooded out. So it doesn't matter if other MAC addresses are on the table. I could have added this guy's MAC address. So as an example, get this guy to ping PC1. That MAC address in the MAC address table doesn't affect the forwarding of traffic to PC2. So I'll put this back to real time to populate the table. MAC address table is now full. This MAC address and this MAC address are irrelevant for frames sent to this MAC address. This is the MAC address of interest. Now, again, this is in Packet Tracer. Packet Tracer is fairly limited. If you want to, I'll lab this up in GNS3 and show you how it works on a more realistic switch. But what I like about Packet Tracer is you can see how the frames flow very easily. Okay, so I've recreated this topology in GNS3. Here it is. Here's PC2. Let's have a look at the MAC address. So ifconfig, there's the MAC address of the PC, there's the IP address of the PC. So that looks good. What about PC4? ifconfig, 
MAC address, IP address of the PC. Let's have a look at the switch. It's really got no configuration on, so show MAC address table. It's learnt the MAC addresses of these devices dynamically. But I'll clear the MAC address and I'll clear all of them except for the address of PC3 per the quiz question. So show MAC address table. So that's what the quiz question originally had in it, but it will be populated when PC2 sends traffic, so I'll need to clear that MAC address again. So on PC2, I'm gonna ping PC4. Ping works, but what you'll notice now is the MAC address table of the switch is populated with multiple MAC addresses. So let's clear MAC address four and MAC address two from the table. So we've only got this MAC address. And what I'll do is start Wireshark captures here. Now in the original question, I used ARP, but any protocol applies. So on the PCs, ARP shows us that PC2 knows the MAC address of PC4. On PC4, ARP shows us that it knows the MAC address of PC2. So these two know about each other, but the switch only knows about PC3. So when I ping from PC4 to PC2, the traffic should be seen on all the other links. So I'll ping 10.1.1.2 and I'll only send one ping. So one ping has been sent, ping was successful. Let's have a look at the Wireshark captures. So I'll search for ICMP. This is for the link to PC2 and you can see the ARP messages there. So as an example, we can see the source and destination MAC addresses from gigabit 01, this interface, to PC2. This is on the link to PC3, so ICMP. Notice you can see that the traffic is going from PC4 to PC2, but has been captured on gigabit 02. Gigabit 02 to PC3, traffic has been captured. Notice no response seen. So Wireshark is showing us that there's a problem here. What about the link from PC1 to the switch, ICMP? There's the ICMP message from PC4 to PC2. So in other words, the traffic was received on both of these links. And we can show that in real time, so I'll keep that Wireshark capture going. And what I'll do is on the switch, clear the MAC address entry for PC2. So it's only got PC4 there, and I'll clear that as well. So show MAC address table is now blank. And on PC4, I'll send another ping. Notice here's another ICMP message. And just to make the point, what I'll do is I'll clear the MAC address table again. So remove the entry just for PC2. So PC4 is in the MAC address table. Notice there are two ICMP messages here. Send it again. Notice here's a third one. Sent from gigabit 00 on the switch to PC1. So in other words, on this link. So the moral of the story again is unknown unicast traffic is flooded by a switch. Doesn't matter if it's ARP, or if it's ICMP or whatever it is, if a frame hits the switch and it doesn't know where the destination MAC address is, it's gonna flood the frame. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if these quiz questions are useful and interesting and whether you like these type of videos. I wanna wish you all the very best.